Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us tonight for our 13th annual Local Legends event. My name is Katie Hale, and I'm the president of the board of directors here at the History Center of Lake Forest and Lake Bluff. And speaking for all of us at the History Center, we are so happy to welcome you tonight to the museum. Local Legends is our primary annual fundraiser. Proceeds from this event support the many activities we carry out to celebrate our community's rich history, including exhibits, programs, education initiatives, and the preservation of the museum collection and archives. I would like to thank our lead sponsors for this year's Local Legend event, Anne and Greg Jones, Lake Forest Bank and Trust Company, and Westminster Capital. I also want to recognize our primary sponsors, the Hunter Family Foundation, Robin and Sandy Stewart, Friends of Lake Forest Parks and Recreation Board, and Northwestern Healthcare. We are also so grateful for our many patron sponsors and supporters. I also want to acknowledge our appreciation for previous local legends. We have one here tonight, Susan Garrett, was our 2021 <laughs> local legend. Special thanks go to the local legends event co-chairs, Kathy Dasso and Fred Jackson. The board of directors, staff, and volunteers for all their hard work in making this year's program a success. And without further ado, I would like to welcome our 2022 local legend, Ed Waymer, and Emmy Award winning journalist, Larry Potash. So I'll take, uh, since I, I have a history crowd, I'll, I'll take a quick second to, to plug my history show backstory which has new episodes uh, Saturday at 7, Sunday at 11 for the next two weeks. And you know, history, we grew up with history being about dates and places, and it's really, really about people, which is why I enjoy interviewing people like Ed. And it's not about the when and the where, but it's about the how and the why. And so that's what I hope this interview will bring out without making you cry. <laughs> 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 but I'm going to try. <laughs> um, so some, some kids go to college and they're trying to figure out how to do as little work as possible in one major and you went after two. Yes. Why? <laughs> well, a friend of mine came up to me. It was my oldest friend ever. We passed away very tragically a couple years ago, but went to grade school, high school, college with him, and he, um, he found a loophole in Georgetown's book that said, I take four more, five more classes, I get two degrees for the price of one, two diplomas. So I can do that. So when we visited, the, we went over to the dean, and he goes, you're absolutely right. You're the only two guys you're going to get. I'm changing it tomorrow. 
<laughs> so, uh, I had to take one summer school class at Loyola University, cost accounting. And I got a degree in finance, a diploma in finance, one in accounting, and there, off we went. I, I think the world has two groups of people numbers people and non-numbers people. And I'm a non-numbers person, and I don't get people who are numbers people. Are, are, you, are you passionate? Are we applauding for numbers back there? <laughs> okay. Uh, were you, at the time, were you passionate about numbers or business, or was it just money? Uh, it was business. My dad, my dad asked me, and, you know, I was a big dumb dog. <laughs> you hit, you're, you know, freshman in college. You kind of lay around upside down on the couch, the couch all day. And I said, what are you going to do? I go, business. I go, what kind of it? Business. What kind of it? <laughs> business. I was go get your CPA. You get paid for asking really dumb questions. You're the auditor. You go in and go to manufacturing and, you know, um, distribution, finance, insurance. Find out what you like. I said, okay. That's what I did. So. Hmm. I mean, numbers, number, I, I like numbers, but um, I could never do a logarithm to save my life. Out of those. <laughs> uh, my, my, my limit is right about here. We got to, you had um, calculus. Yeah. Actually, approach is why I never get there. I go, just get the damn thing there, would you? <laughs> I mean, why can't I get there? So um, that was just a little bit of math. So what in your life outside of numbers in school and, and banking has helped inspire you or drive you to success? My family. When I, um, we started Lake Forest Bank, quit my job because I was working 12 hours a day, six days a week, and I got to see the family. My kids, I had six, five kids at the time, over here at St. Mary's, couldn't see them. I said, well, I'd just go be George Bailey. And, uh, and as a result, it worked out really well because I always remember I have customers and clients in my office. First of all, I was about as big as this chair. I mean, the first office was, <laughs> Lynn, you remember that, don't you? <laughs> I fell over my chair once. I couldn't even hit the ground. It was so small. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have ho-ho. We had a ho-ho. It's a ha-ha. You know, like this, like that. And, um, but uh, anyhow, it, um, um, the kids would come and, I have clients, they come and throw their backpacks in the office, and yeah. yes, that's all I wanted, and, and, but we couldn't stop there. We had to keep going. Yeah. Before, though, when you are earlier, when you were a kid trying to figure out what you want to do, what, what was the driving force behind that? I had no idea what I wanted to do. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to make it to the next day, you know. <laughs> I wanted to have fun, and I, I, we had a lot of fun. A little bit of a rabble-rouser growing up, but... Um, well, that's odd, because you seem like a guy who has vision. So is that born out of necessity to support a family, or did that just develop along the way? Um, uh, fear is a great yeah. motivator. <laughs> <laughs> you got five kids, you got 30 grand in the bank, you I got to do something here, man. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you got to go do it on your own. Yeah. And I was curious about rugby because I've seen it, I recognize it, I don't know anything about it. I don't understand it when I'm watching it. Is, was there some life lesson from playing rugby? Yeah, don't drink too much. <laughs> <laughs> that and be careful because you have a new knee and a new hip and a new back very quickly after you, you play. But I wouldn't change it for anything, really. Yeah, why? Because it's just fun. It was a lot of great camaraderie with your pals. And um, um, like Ned Jessen came up to me earlier today. He goes, when you were in Loyola, he was at North Shore Country Day. He mm -hmm. goes, you played us, right? I go, yeah, we did. I was junior varsity, my sophomore was junior varsity, we played him and played well, a story about how Loyola well, was a pretty good foot, it is now and still back then was even mm. better, a football school. And um, we played him and this guy playing linebacker and this little guy catches a pass, he, pass, he sees me coming, he's gonna die, he's like almost gonna fall over and die. This guy threw him down, went back to the sidelines. Coaches you, you got to hit him, you got to hit him. What are you doing? What are you doing? You just you let him off easy. Next guy, the guy, time caught, he caught a pass. I clocked him. <laughs> <laughs> and the poor kid did get up for a little while. It was kind of bad, but um, <laughs> well, it wasn't you, Ned. <laughs> <laughs> but you have a story. It's just, 
and especially the North Shore and, and all, I mean, great stories come from it. It's a wonderful, um, yeah. the team sports are wonderful. You, you're, my best pal is my pals from Silver High School. Um, so you start a bank in 91. What is the challenge of, of starting a business, let alone a bank, and trying to find what you need to do differently to compete? We were fortunate because of the timing. Mm -hmm. Timing was such that I, I was in public accounting. I, I went to banking, and um, all and nobody, Illinois was the last state to change their banking laws. So nobody knew how to merge banks. And I, so I had a mentor go, go figure out how to merge banks. 27 years old, PCs were just coming out. I broke in, they had two at, the, um, at Ernst at the time. And um, I trashed TRS-80s with a disc as big as LPs, you know? Yeah. Where I broke in, in the <laughs> stayed all night, Dorothy, remember that? Stayed all night, figured out how to do it, all taxes and stuff, built in a computer program. Went home, shower, came back to work. And I show it to my mentor, he goes, that's great. An hour later, he comes to my house, he goes, I'm going to plane tomorrow to Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh National's buying property, you got to tell him how to do it. 27 years old, I got to go tell these guys how to burn your bank. Well, me? <laughs> I go, okay. So I get on, the, I, get on the, I go through the security, I go, I don't know if these discs can go through the, the, the x-ray thing or not, get screwed up. <laughs> so get there, I'm late. I got the, I've got these, um, I go in this boardroom, all wood, all the dead guys with beards on the board, yeah. you know? <laughs> and uh, and uh, they go, you're late. And it's, it's the executive committees of both boards. I was like, I was scared out of my mind. Winged it, got through it, ended up doing, um, doing that work. And um, Yet you, um, I, I don't know anything about banks. Um, I don't know where they come from. Uh, <laughs> Well, I moved to Lake Forest, and I thought, ah, Lake Forest Bank. That sounds like a good idea. And, and the idea of a small neighborhood bank yeah. appealed to me, um, as opposed to being a, a number at City or wh whatever the other big banks are. I didn't realize that you're a big deal. It's like you're, they're, they're, it's a big, it's still a pretty good-sized yeah. bank, but did that, you set out consciously to do that. Why? Because, as I was saying, all the great community banks got bought up at the time yeah. by um, bigger banks, and there, and there was a need. I was doing bank acquisitions, so I'd kind of seen what worked, what didn't work, and and um, so uh, we just said, "Well, I just want to open one bank, be the be the George Bailey of town." And I was like that for a little. People come up, like would come up and say. Um, we get meat at Don's, and they go, you should eat that red meat, you know? <laughs> it's like, who are you? <laughs> Quiet, darn it. Uh, but um, it, it, um, we wanted to bring that personal service back. Big guys had screwed it up. Mm -hmm. And um, we did that, and it worked. We, I quit my job on, um, what, um, before Labor Day in 1991. They had to later they showed up here with the big phone and the like. And phone only worked on uh, Market Square. <laughs> I said in the phone, just to order a phone, you know, a landline. Uh, we had the old craft drugstore space, and I had to call my wife to bring a card table over, and she had five kids in the car, and it was a rainy day, and I'm, I go, thanks, dear. She goes, hope you know what the hell you're doing. I go, so do I. <laughs> 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 and... Uh, so off it went. We opened the day after Christmas with 11 people, 1,100 square feet. And mm -hmm. People were lined up out the door. We said, this is going to work. Raised six billion bucks from friends and neighbors and family. Couldn't, if you wanted to do it, I'd have to raise like 40 or 50 million dollars. Mm -hmm. Sorry, but we had to raise six. And uh, we did that, and um, off we went and lined up out the door. First day, open accounts. You know, and I'll do it. I will, and the next day, they go, Ed, please don't do it anymore. <laughs> I screwed everything up, so I would go greet people and put them in the right direction. Yeah. But um, we'd buy them coffee at the place next door and because it, uh, we were lined up and waiting to open accounts. It was awesome. Yeah. And we did it again in Hinsdale in 93. That even went even better. 
Wilmette 94 went even better than that. Wilmette, they, they had Bank One take over their local bank. They hated it. People come down the alley, had wheelbarrows full of money. That they, by that time, we had balloon guys, everybody to entertain people. We had <laughs> open accounts. It was wild. Best thing about Wilmette was I bought my grandfather's grocery store to do it. We opened up my grand, and we went down. I remember we bought it and doing the inspection. I got on. My name was still carved in the table. You used to have to wash the produce out. It's kind of neat. Yeah. Being your grandfather's spot, but um, we just worked and worked. It always worked, and um, because we had the high tuck, high touch, high tech approach, and and we have a. Um, but by the time we hit um, number six, which is Barrington, I had been all I did was raising cap. We had to raise capital all the time because we were growing so fa so fast. Had two breakfasts, two lunches, and two dinners every day. <laughs> this weigh 120 pounds. Look at me now. <laughs> um, but we went public. By, we put them all together in one holding company called a Wind Trust because through a dart at a book of English companies and land on Int Wind Trust. That's a good name. Let's use that. <laughs> so I and um, so that's where we became public because of that. But we never want anybody to know we're big. We we figure we call. Who cares what we call it? Would have picked a different ticker symbol, WTFC. Who the F cares is what people yeah. think. Right <laughs> a lot of my caddies go, yeah, I remember it. Who the F cares? Say, yeah, that's us, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. But um, anyhow, that's kind of how we came into yeah. being. I remember Jack Schuler saying to me that um, what's more important than strategy is culture. And I... I find, at least in my business, uh, the big shots often miss that mark. Um, maybe you could explain what is meant by culture. And I think this transcends business. I think it may transcend to our personal life. What is meant by culture? And what did it mean for you to get it right among your employees? What, is, what does it mean? Culture is everything. You know, we, we, a lot of the bank, we have 15 charter banks, 180 locations of the charter banks we have. We started nine or ten from scratch, others we bought. Culture is everything. And um, we go to buy a bank, uh, culture doesn't match up, I won't go near it. Not even cl close. So um, <laughs> uh, our culture is one of, I, can, I came up with a poem to kind of go through it. Yeah. Take the blame, share the fame, enjoy, avoid the shame, enjoy the game. <laughs> Take the blame means be accountable. Mm -hmm. we, we, we let people run their banks because they know their towns better than we do. One of the beauties we have is we can go into, you know, Hinsdale and we hired a guy who knew everybody at Hinsdale. You have to let him run his bank. Put the guardrails up, let him run his bank. Everything that doesn't touch a customer is consolidated behind the scenes, but um, touches a customer, it's right up there up front. And don't, don't, don't have people be um, excited about, fine, you know, giving a fine. Have them be excited about avoiding that, take care of the customer, you know. $5 fee, you can lose a customer. Who cares about five bucks, you know. Mm -hmm. Let them run their banks. Let them do what they've got to do. And put the guardrails up and off they go. So take the blame means be accountable. Um, a couple of the guys are here. You accountable? Mm-hmm. Yes, you are. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> where's Lee? You accountable? Yes, I am. Budget time's cut up. You better be. Mm -hmm. Budget time's always fun because I these, I've got these buttons in front of me. Yes, no, maybe, BS. Uh, I'm going to go out five more. I had the monkey with the symbols. <laughs> Somebody starts, you know, BS and me. I go, turn the monkey out. I go, okay, you got me, you know. We have fun when we do, but um, you have to be accountable. I think that's the problem with a lot of stuff in this country right now. You're able to blame everybody else. You've got to be accountable. You want to run it? You want, to, you want that freedom? You've got to be accountable. There's a murder someplace. There's a murder in Portland, Oregon. Everybody going, everybody thinking, I wasn't in Portland, but I got to think about it, you know. Whatever's going on, if you have a problem, everybody should say, my problem, not, not anybody else's, no, no finger pointing. Um, 
share the fame means push everything down as close to the people, really do the work as you can. They do all the work, they get excited about it. You're a leader. You, I think that you can't think about yourself, you gotta think about everybody else. Like almost military, mm -hmm. think about the mission we're trying to do. Push, push it down to them, because you really did the work. They really appreciate it, fires them up, and they did all the work, they should feel good about it. Um, avoid the shame is pretty easy. Don't do anything stupid. Um, I always use the forums for that. <laughs> forums are, first of all, you think about it, you're faced with an issue and you go, hmm, should I do this or not? You go, well, first of all, what would, uh, would your, everybody's got a mentor, what would your mentor think if you did? What would the media think if you did? What would your maker think, what would your mother think if you did? What would your maker think if you did it? Pass all four of those, you can do it. Enjoy the game means have a great, have a right um, work-life balance. Life is too short. You gotta be able to um, really enjoy your work. And I just tell people, I could have a game. I'm gonna work. I go, take the work home. No, you're gonna do it. Put your kid's game. Get the hell out of here. Yeah. Your life is too short, man. You gotta, you gotta enjoy it. And mm -hmm. I think our people appreciate we do have a lot of turn. We're like the the Cuban life raft. Everybody wants to work for us because the only bank left in town that they really trains you and helps you and leaves you alone, lets you do your stuff. So. Yeah. so. You, you mentioned the George Bailey analogy, and I would imagine that there are <laughs> people and organizations who on paper probably should not get money from you, but do. Correct? Have you given money out to people who maybe wouldn't get money at another bank? On the lending side? Yeah. Yeah. Half of them are here today, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to name any names? <laughs> well, how, how important, I guess what I'm getting at is to invest in the, in the community that you live in. Oh, you have to do that, and that's a part of what we do. I mean, um, in Lake Forest, there's not an event that goes on we're not involved in. Mm -hmm. Same for every other town we're in. Now we're over the, we're over the whole city of Chicago now. Our, our approach is we give a hand out, not a hand, a hand up, not a hand out. Mm -hmm. I had one lady come in, security organizer, come in and say what she did. And, That's great, nice to meet you. Because I've never left the CEO's office. I had a check before I go, oh, it's the first time. Um, <laughs> she really didn't do it. She just wanted the money to do her own thing. We don't do that. We'll help people. I mean, we're the largest for a Crystal Ray network mm -hmm. in the country. We, um, I, I can't tell you the number of things we're involved in um, in terms of helping people out, but um, you know, charitable and getting involved side, it's really important. We get, and our people get involved also. Um, you, you hear about big banks when they, they, they helicopter check in. We don't do that. We, we get, our people are all on the boards of the communities they're in, get involved. They want to make it a better place because that's good business. You make it a better place, you get better business out of it, everybody, everybody's better off. So mm -hmm. that's what we do, and our people love it. Um, and we consolidated everybody behind all the people who don't touch customers behind the scenes. So we took the deposit operations from Lake Forest and put them in Rosemont and you know, Hinsdale and put them in Rosemont. They, everybody complained that they couldn't. What about the parades? What about things we used to do? I go, still do them. So we put up this, we put up a board now where if people could sign up whatever they want to do. We're oversubscribed for everything. Every event we run, every event we do. So. Let me ask you a money question. What in the hell is cryptocurrency? <laughs> Tulips and <in> Holland. <laughs> <laughs> whoever came up with it, whoever came up with it made a lot of money. But there's, there's no faith or credit. Anybody behind it? It's just a big speculative bunch of stuff. I would, I would love to know who actually came up with the idea, who made the money, the original money. There's nothing there. I mean, I don't know why anybody, I, why anybody play with it. It's very speculative, obviously, on the, on the markets, but. Um, it's, it's one of those things, it reminds me of 
the tech bubble where like nobody understood websites and stuff, but everybody wanted to jump on it because they thought everybody's making money, yeah. not knowing what it was. And I imagine maybe there are people in this room that said, I don't know what it is, but here's some money just in case. Bad idea? Um, I'd rather have tulips in Holland. Than Holland. <laughs> <laughs> you know, nobody's faith and credit behind it. You're, you're just, I mean, a lot of people use it because theoretically it can't be traced because of the blockchain. They broke blockchain probably two and a half years ago. They can trace it. Um, so, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Say the Fed's coming with their own sort of crypto. I don't know why they need it, but yeah. um, you get money. Every I mean, availability is, is so fast right now in money between Zelle and yeah. personal transfers and wires now. I mean, it's immediate. Does that concern you as a banker that maybe there's a point uh, in the distant future where we don't need buildings on the corner or, and it's just back and forth with a click of a thumb? Um, believe it or not, our teller counts are up mm. because we grow, we grow so fast. Um, people, we still so count change, we got change machines. Machine. You go in Florida, you can't find anybody to give you a change or count anywhere. Here you can't do it either. What are you going to do with your kids on Saturday? You come in the bank, you put your checks in. Mm -hmm. Some people, it's part of their daily routine, go to the bank and visit Lynn and people there who are fun. And um, We made every one of our banks almost, um, we said, a centerpiece in the town. So we try to have events there and people have board meetings. Just get people in. Mm -hmm. Meet at the bank, meet our bank. We moved downtown. We bought, we... Um, you have 231, the old Continental Bank building. Anybody been there? Mm. Big, big as a football field in the middle. Uh, big 40-foot pillars and mm -hmm. murals up there and all sorts of crazy stuff. And we let any charity in the, in the city wants to use it, use it for free. Mm. We use it for a lot of issues, but a lot of events. But anybody wants to use it can use it. So we do in all the banks. And, and I think it's important. We're not going to build big ones anymore. You build smaller ones and mm -hmm. make them adaptable so the event that does all go. Um, what do you like, in closing, what, we often ask people what do, they, what do they do for a living, but what do you like to do? Now that you've made it, you, you're successful, you might, do you ever wake up and say, okay, now what? <laughs> well, miles ago before we sleep. Um, John Lillard was here back there. John was our first non-executive chairman. And John, I remember we were building, we, at the time we had maybe five banks, and we had six banks, and maybe seven at the time. Everybody was saying, you're just building this to sell. And John came in and he said, Ed, anybody can sell, not everybody can build. I always remember that. John is the best advice I ever got. Or we've been, we're serial builders. Chicago's a great town, deserves its own bank, we're going to be that bank. Mm -hmm. Think about it. They don't have their own bank anymore. Northern Trust is great, but they're not really a bank. They're more of a clearinghouse and money manager and that sort of stuff. We're going to be that bank. And um, I'm on a mission to make that happen. We can make the community better. And we could, I think I would have any questions about politics here because, I mean, we need some help there to make it better. But... In our own little way, we can make it better, one person at a time, one brick at a time, one person at a time, and it's the important thing to do. Banks are important. They're really an important part of the, of the um, whole fabric of the madras of neighborhoods of, of Chicago. And we're, we can tie it together because we understand that Calumet City is different than Winnetka or Lake Forest, and Pilsen's different. Because of our structure and how we do it, we can, we deliver, it's not just when it's, you know, Lake Forest Bank and Trust or Pilsen Bank. Pilsen Bank and Trust has passbooks and <laughs> does things differently. We, we can serve each community. We don't have to yeah. do it every place. And we can, make, we can make it a better place by doing that, and that's what we try to do. And I'll grow up right here in Lake Forest, too. Well, Ed, thank you for sharing your story, and we appreciate everything you do for the community. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, man, that's for you. <laughs>
<laughs> Not one tear. All right. <laughs> okay, at this point, um, I'd like to bring up our Local Legends co-chairs, Kathy Dasso and Fred Jackson. So Larry, please accept this gift as a token of our appreciation. And Ed, the History Center is honored to recognize you as our 2022 local legend with this award. Oh, thank you. Thank you both for sharing your talents with us today. Thank you all for joining us this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you.